Once upon a time, there lived a 30-year-old man. He was a soldier for the Indian military. In April 1997, he came down with a mild illness and had a few days of diarrhea, followed by several weeks of bizarre symptoms, including megaphagia, or increased appetite, causing him to gain 30 kilograms, or 66 pounds, occasional weakness and confusion, irritability, hallucinations, including that his arms were changing shape, other people's legs were growing and shrinking, letters on the page were becoming blurry or moving around, and that moving objects would stop suddenly. He also experienced sexual disinhibition and obsession with prostitutes. He became forgetful, easily confused, and anxious. At times, he spoke nonsense. He had trouble staying awake, but his colleagues kept him awake in order to perform his military duties, and this made him very irritable. Concerned with his symptoms, he went home to seek medical attention. A private psychiatrist diagnosed him with neurosis. Two months later, his symptoms seemed to resolve. In May 1988, his symptoms returned but resolved on their own. In December 88, symptoms returned and he received a presumptive diagnosis of schizophrenia and was treated with neuroleptics, or dopamine antagonists, also known as antipsychotics. He did not respond well to these drugs, so in April 1989, he searched out another psychiatrist. This one suspected depression, his symptoms seemed to resolve. In March 1990, his symptoms returned and he went home AWOL. While home, he slept all day. After three weeks, he felt better and went back to his position in the military. A few weeks later, his symptoms returned and he began contemplating suicide. In August 1990, he again went home AWOL and slept almost all day. When he was awake, he was eating or spying on women as they bathed. In November 1990, his wife brought him to the regimental center of the military. He was evaluated and found to have excessive of sweating and some confusion. During his stay, he slept 18 hours per day if uninterrupted and experienced some periods of confusion when he was awake. They found he had an above average IQ of 119, his blood sugar, urea, creatine, cholesterol, liver function, skull x-ray, brain CT, and waking EEG were all normal. His Rorschach test showed impulsivity but no signs of neuroses. He was eventually diagnosed with Klein-Levin syndrome or KLS. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services says KLS is characterized by recurring but reversible episodes of excessive sleep up to 20 hours per day. Symptoms occur as episodes typically lasting a few days to a few weeks. Episode onset is is often abrupt and may be associated with flu-like symptoms. Excessive food intake, irritability, childishness, disorientation, hallucination, and an abnormally uninhibited sex drive may be observed. I chose this disease because my sister has it. Once I chose KLS, I chose this individual because he has experiences common to the disorder, such as long time to diagnosis, Cabra et al. found, average time from symptom onset to diagnosis of over 20 months, but also some uncommon features such as late age of onset. He was 30 compared to usually around 15. He also experienced suicidal ideations. Suicidal ideations appear to be very rare, seen in less than 4% of KLS patients. This could reflect the fact that suicidality in KLS is understudied, or this could reflect his suicidality being a consequence of him being forced to keep functioning while he was sick. In most cases, the most prominent symptom is excessive sleep and difficulty staying awake. This case was unique in that the patient often succeeded in staying awake which shed light on symptoms experienced when someone is awake during an episode of KLS. Physiology of KLS is still largely unknown. But this case study describes KLS, a functional dysregulation of the mesenosymphalic hypothalamolimbic system that has been postulated as an underlying mechanism, the exact nature of which remains obscure. It further explains that the condition usually starts with febrile illness, so viral causes seem likely. Other studies have found infectious agents of precipitating infections to include Epstein-Barr virus, varicella zoster virus, Asian influenza virus, enterovirus, the typhoid vaccine, and streptococcus. Generally, upper respiratory symptoms like that of a cold are seen. Other things that seem to precipitate some episodes in some patients are alcohol use, sleep deprivation, head trauma, physical exertion, stress, traveling, or marijuana use. The symptoms of KLS are similar to those of hypothalamic or third ventricle tumors, which suggests that the thalamus may be involved. Researchers have found diffuse brain hypoperfusion or hypoperfusion throughout the brain and focused hypoperfusion in the thalamus and the frontotemporal areas in KLS patients. During symptomatic periods, they also saw hypoactivity in the thalamic region and a small amount of hypoactivity in the hypothalamus and frontal and temporal regions. They also found decreased striatal dopamine transporter 
binding potential, which is determined by the number of available transporters and their affinity for dopamine. The symptom of derealization suggests underlying parietotemporal dysfunction may be involved. Derealization could result from hypoperfusion to the parietotemporal junction as part of the diffuse hyperperfusion. There is no definitive treatment, but there are many experimental options. The stimulants can help with the sleepiness, but they worsen irritability. Medications typically used in other mental illnesses such as lithium and carbazepine have been used. Another approach is to reinforce the circadian rhythm, which can be done by morning light therapy and low doses of melatonin before bed in a method similar to that used in seasonal affective disorder. In this case, the negative ideations such as thoughts of suicide were countered by cognitive therapy. He was given carbazepine and fenfluramine. While this treatment worked for our guy, the authors acknowledge that we can't conclude that it's an effective treatment based on one case since patients with KLS often have natural remission eventually.